It's good afternoon. Two o'clock. Right on not money. We are getting together for Bible study, Genesis chapter 25. Um, just a reminder, this is a discussion. I'm Pastor Porkhart, by the way. This is a discussion we're having, which means your likes, your comments, and your like will be heard by me, or actually they'll be read by me, and I will get to them if I see them. So first got to wait for some Facebook folks to catch up with us, and there's six, and we're on our way. So, good, 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 good. Hi, Linda, the Lord be with you. Greet a few of you as you come in, and we'll be on our way. Colonel Davis in the house. Hope you're having a great week, by the way. Hope you're having a spectacular week. Gene, the Lord be with you. Brenda, peace be with you. Uh, Cheryl, good to see you. What if we use all caps? Well, if you use all caps, then I will respond emphatically. I'd shout at you. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> no more than I shout all the time. You know, um, hi, Michelle. Peace be with you. No more than I shout all the time. I'm very boisterous. I'm the guy that is shouting and he doesn't even know he's shouting. So, hi, Beth. Good to see you. All right. We are in Genesis 25. I think we are. At least I, I'm guessing we are. Yes, we are. Hi, Betty. Good to see you. Thor is sitting on my chair over on the other side of my room, and I would, I would show it to you, but uh, it's just I don't know. That's just the way he rolls. He's, um, you know, he's been a little bit. Um, He's been a little bit um, skittish lately. He's been a little, oops, it's not all together on, right? Now it is. All right, so away we go. Hi, Jennifer. The Lord be with you. So we ended with Baron, um, Baron Sarah is in need of a, um, Baron Sarah is in need of the Lord uh, to uh, to give her a um, a child, not Sarah, Rebecca. Thank you. So Rebecca, twenty years of marriage, she doesn't have a kid. Um, Isaac is like sixty, and so she gets pregnant. Uh, the Lord does it. Uh, Luther, Luther says that it was Shim who preached to her this sermon. Because she gets pregnant, and um, uh, there's just like this rumbling. Um, <laughs> hi, Cindy. The Lord be with you. There's this 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 um, rumbling. Yes, uh, Thor is um, gonna play host to all the higher things, folks, next week. Hope nobody gets bitten. Felicity's in the house, and so. Um, I want you to, to sort of take this in, though, that um, she's got this rumbling going on. The children are fighting in her womb. You see, because babies, when we love them, are babies. Um, when we don't love them, they're fetuses that we can get rid of. So the... <laughs> uh, per life. Anyway, so, but, but, but the... the the babies are fighting in her room and she's like, what is going on? Have I made a mistake? Um, we're going to go and we're going to be besties. Uh, I hope so, Cindy. I hope so. Um, <clears throat> we'll see. He's not a big fan of volunteers. Anyway, the children struggled together within her. And she said, if this is it, if this is thus, why is this happening to me? And so she went into a choir of the Lord. Uh, Luther says that she acquired of Shem, you know, oldest living great, 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 great grandpa or something like that. Oldest living relative, the guy who knew about the flood because uh, he lived it, is still alive. 
And so um, whether you believe that it was right to the Lord and he heard her prayer, or if you believe that there was um, a minister of the gospel, I don't really care. Um, either one is fine by me. Um, <laughs> Thor is kind of like the Lord in this, that he uh, Jacob, he loved Esau, he hated. He likes who he likes, and he doesn't like who he doesn't like. Um, speaking of, let's go. Uh, Yahweh said to her, this is verse 23, two nations are in your womb. Two nations are in your belly. And two peoples are within you. And they're divided. And there's discord. The one shall be stronger than the other. The older shall serve the younger. This is very, um, well, this is countercultural. Um, you should not miss this. Uh, good evening, Matt. This is countercultural. We call that product placement. And if I was really cool, it would have been super smooth. Um, so the um, the thing to remember here is how countercultural this is. Es Esau, the, the, the first it, firstborn is everything. Okay. Um, I say this as a second son. Um, the firstborn is everything. Usually even, um, have a great day, Maggie. The Lord be with you. Um, I hope you can catch us later. Uh, so this prophecy, this word from God, is um, literally countercultural. Because it, it's everything about what is desirable will be on the firstborn, but he's going to serve the secondborn. There are two nations in your womb, and they're going at it. It's WWE right in your womb. It's the octagon um, right in your womb. And um, one's going to be stronger than the other, but the, the younger is going to be served by the other. Okay? How is this any different than everything that has come before? Isaac is a second kid. Um, Abel was the one that was loved. God doesn't care about when you were born. He doesn't care about the blood in your veins or who your family is. Um, he wants to save. And he wants to, to, to uh, have himself a people. And so he, he does his being God um, the way he does it. He doesn't, he doesn't check with us and say, is it okay with you? If, if I make, if I like Abel and his offering more than I like Cain, is it okay with you that I'm pro Isaac and not, um, I'm not going to send the, I'm not anti Ishmael. I'm just not going to send my, my son through that line. The, the people outside, there's a, um, Right outside my window is um, is uh, a nursing home, um, and the uh, the workers like to to um, to like congregate and smoke and all that. Right outside my window, and right when I said that, there was a laughter like ha 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 right over there. So somebody thought I was funny, although they didn't even actually hear it. They were talking amongst themselves. Crazy things with a live thing every day. Um, when her days were complete. This is actually, it should sound familiar. Because when Matthew um, and Luke um, deliver the birth of Christ, they speak um, in the same sort of language. Um, uh when the days were accomplished that she should give birth, she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swathing clothes, and laid him in a manger. Um, here in, um, in 24, when her days were accomplished, when they were, when they were completed, 
um, to give birth, behold, um, Hena, behold, there were twins in her womb. Just like the Lord said. I'm going to sneeze. They were twins in the room, in 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 the uh, in the uh, in the womb. So, firstborn is everything. Remember, the firstborn comes out. Uh, the first one came out, and he was <laughs> he was um, uh, Adamina, Adamine. Excuse me. He was, he was red, like a, um, like a hairy cloak. Uh, so they called him Esau, which means hairy dude. So, so out comes this furry baby. Um, and, uh, uh, wolf man. No, out comes this furry baby with, he's like, he's like furry and it's like red hair. Um, and, and, and so they name, he's like red. And so they name him Esau, which is like hairy kid. Okay. Um, afterwards, his brother comes out with his hand holding Esau's heel. Okay. His hand is grasping for Esau's heel. Thor's over there just the text in a way. It's crazy. Um, uh, yeah, I'm your furry baby, baby. Yes, he's my he's my Esau. Um, his brother came out and he's holding his 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 um he's holding Esau's heel. Um, they're fighting even in the womb and struggling for who comes out first. And Esau comes out first, but but um uh. Um, but it's like they're fighting over who gets to go first and, and, and Esau's first, but, but only by, a by, a by a head. Ha, 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 uh, by a nose length, eh, most of his body, but, um, so you got, you got, and, and, and so they called him Jacob, which, which. Which means, um, it's it's sort of like he grasps, but there's a trickster element to Jacob. So um, you could translate his name as he grasps, as in he was grasping hold. So one is a hairy kid, um, Esau, and the other one is a kid that's, um, who, who's like grasping hold of uh, of things, sort of a trickster. Um, his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when, um, when she bore them. So Isaac is 60. He married at 40. So it took 20 years for them to, to, to be born. Um, uh, Luther extols uh, Isaac's um, Isaac's uh, uh, I should have named Thor Jacob um because there's more of Loki than of Thor about him but uh Jacob his character is seen in his fight for to be first this sort of trickster nature nature of it Luther wants to go on and on about the the, the sort of celibacy the virtue of of Isaac and I don't think it's in the text um, there seems to be up through the Middle Ages a goodly bit of business of this idea that and I'm not going to take more than 30 seconds on this but this idea that you know um, that is bad like what goes on between man and woman is only to go on when when they the itch becomes so crazy that you you, you have to scratch it um and that, that's a sort of a, that's a product of the time, a product of, of the, of the, um, of the sort of 
platonic thought, you know, that you only sort of do those things, you indulge your single flesh when you have to. But there's no evidence in the text that they weren't trying. Because if, if she were barren and it was just because he wasn't, um, there's no reason to pray. There's, there's just a reason to go, you know, hey, buddy, we need a magic moment. Um, so, but here, um, Abraham, so if Isaac's 60, Abraham's 160, um, Abraham's alive to see the boys turn 15. Uh, so, so if you're, if you're charging at home, just because we, 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 we buried Abraham, um, the boys buried Abraham a chapter ago, um, that, that was the, that was to, to sort of in that till so we could move on. But, you know, they buried him when he died. Moses wrote about it to, to sort of round out that chapter. Um, as time goes, you know, if it's Isaac's 60, Abraham's 160, um, Abraham dies at 175. So 15 more years, um, Let's keep going. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm very uncomfortable with all of that. Uh, Maggie, as you can, um, I, 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 I'm able to teach on the sixth commandment to a thousand youth without ever using the S word. Um, I just, I think the more we sort of talk about it, um, we should, we should, we should, we should sort of our culture has sort of glorified it. And we talk about it all the time. The sixties taught us that, Hey, we need to get all that out there. Youth leaders are all like the more graphic, the, the, the discussion, the better. Um, um, and I, am just not, a, am not a fan of that. So, um, to, to uh, sort of, uh, I don't know a man is what she says. Okay. Um, uh, Mary says that, um, Rebecca did not know a man. Okay, so like let let's leave the knowing verb to itself. Okay, so we've got um, the boys grew up. Esau, a skilled hunter, a man of the field. Jacob, quiet man. It could be translated um, virtuous man, a man of integrity. Um, there's nothing wrong with it, Felicity. I just don't. I just don't use that word. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's necessary to use that word. I can get myself in enough trouble by by just being myself. Oh, CNET. It's going crazy with news. I'm going to have to give this a, uh, a do not disturb. But um, the two boys couldn't have been more different. Jacob, he's a virtuous man. It's quiet. That word can also mean virtuous. It can mean a, in, a man of integrity. So Esau is a guy who goes hunting. Um, he's a manly man. You'll see him on Duck Dynasty, furry like that. Um, uh, um, Jacob seems rather lame in comparison to that. He, he, he's, he's quiet. He's, um, he's humble. It appears he's, he's, he's virtuous. Um, uh, you'll see that the Lutheran study Bible says, uh, quiet man could be translated man of integrity. Um, uh, quiet man, uh, not to be confused with, um, the the seven is it the seventies or sixties John Wayne movie The Quiet Man. Yeah. Uh, one of my dad's favorite movies. Um, does whistling count? Anyway, um, so uh, so the the boys grow up. Esau is everything you'd ever want in a son in the ancient world. A hunter. Um, He's, he's a man of the field. Uh, Jacob is this, this sort of 
mama's boy. And 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 he lives in the tents. So Esau's out in the field, Jacob's in the tents. Girly man. Um and it shows in 28. Um Esau loved Esau. Isaac loved Esau, uh, but um because because he ate his because he ate his food. Um and uh well that wasn't very you're right. Um that he was quiet and he was he was feminine is very unpolitically correct. Um I'm okay with that. That's just what the the text says. Um so so Jacob is quiet. He's he's a, he's a man of integrity. He's living in the he's he's dwelling in the tents. Esau Isaac loves Esau because he because he eats his food. But and this is the key here. Rebecca. Rebecca loved Jacob. So the division between the brothers extends even until even to the parents. Um Jacob um, is a mama's boy, and Esau is a dad's boy. Okay, it's seen in their in their in the way they handle themselves. It's seen in the way that they, in the way that they roll. You know, um, more laughter from outside. Yes, um, Jacob is around mom. He's inside the tent. He 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 doesn't hunt. He doesn't. Well, I mean, it doesn't. It's not that he hunts. He's not known for his hunting. Esau is a manly man, uh, known for his hunting. And yes, it does sound like he, Jacob was a mama's boy. Um, but that's okay. Because the moms are getting it right in Genesis. If you haven't noticed it, the moms are getting it right in Genesis. Um, uh, after, after Eve's failure, I have acquired the man, the Lord, uh, of, of Cain. Um, remember that... Uh, Sarah wants Hagar's boy, Ishmael, out because the important kid is um, um, the important kid is is the um, uh, is the heir, Isaac. Here, uh, God promised the, 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 the older would serve the younger. And the younger is Jacob. And so J Mama... Now, uh, this begs the question, did Mama tell... Um, did Mama tell Dad what the Lord said to her? And a lot of folks say that Isaac behaves as if he did not know this. As if... as if um, That's all good, Pat. Good to see you. Pat, I know where you live, so it's okay that you appear late. Um, the moms are getting it right. Uh, Jacob, did did Dad know? Um, a lot of commentators say he didn't. That that Rebecca sort of pondered these things in her heart and didn't pass them on to Jake to 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 um, to Isaac. I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think that, I think that she could have, and this could have, could have gone down this way. They're just, they're just things that made Isaac bond with Esau. Like I, um, and just because, um, the older is going to serve the younger does not mean that Jacob is not going to love him as I'm sorry, Isaac is not going to love him just as, um, Abraham loved Ishmael. So I don't know. Uh, Luther took that he she did tell Isaac. Um, uh, Augustine and a bunch of other other folks say that he didn't. Uh, I don't think this matters. What matters is the Lord's words. What matters is who's where's the seed? Where's it coming from? And the seed is coming from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob. Okay, and then to Judah. They're going to get me a new cup, I hope. 
one that has the new logo on it. And I'm doing this sort of deliberately because we work so hard on the new logo. They work so hard on the new logo and the new branding that everything matches. And here's an old cup with the old font. And I'm just going to sort of hold it up so that um, so that a little of the old is still um, is still around. Check it out. Store.HireThings.org. All the new stuff is going to come out soon. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. You want to check it out. All right. Don't miss the... Oh, wait, 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 before we get back to the text, though, don't miss the gospel of the older will serve the younger. The counterculturalness of the whole thing. The for you-ness of the whole thing. That God doesn't play by means of society's rules. Instead, he... He gives gifts and he saves. And that's what's going on. So you can feel lower than low that nobody likes you, that that um, uh, that you aren't special. Okay? That, that, that nobody cares about you, that you're not anything impressive. But despite that, despite that, God cares for you. As he cared for Jacob, as he cared for um, uh, Isaac, as he cared for Abel. Ho, 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 ho. Remember Abel, second son. Not impressive at all. Not impressive at all. And so um, I'm going to show you a Luther quote. I want you, I want you, to, I, I want you to catch this Luther quote. It's, it's the stuff in bold. Here's the foundations of the entire Christian doctrine are confirmed. Through the birth of these twins, God wants to pass sentence in advance on the entire world. Yes, even to anticipate and put to an end the righteousness of the flesh. He wants to teach that all wisdom and excellence of the flesh is lost and vain. By reason of this one statement, the elder shall serve the younger. Hence, this is no discussion about kingdoms and empires of the world, much less... Is it a discussion of mere trifles or of old wise tales? No, these words lay the foundation of our doctrine and powerfully support them, namely, that the God, the flesh, but that before God, flesh is dead and condemned, but the spirit is made alive, and sin and original depravity are hinted at, lest anyone trust in their flesh instead of in the Lord's promises. So Esau grows up, he's big dog, and he's all important. Thus Esau thinks, I am the firstborn, therefore I am the church. I am the son of the people of God, but Jacob has been entirely cast aside without honor and name. In like manner, we are finding out today that our adversaries ar arrogate the title church to themselves, even though they are anything but the church. So everything about Jacob and Esau points to Esau being the guy, except the Lord's words. Except the Lord's words. And to understand the giving away of his birthright, you have to understand that his birthright's nothing to Esau. Because what does it matter? What does it matter that I give you a blessing? I'm everything. You're nothing. Boy, you're boy, you don't even leave the tent. Go play with mom and 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 maybe, you know. Do, do the stuff that mom does. I'm it. Dad loves me. Dad likes my stuff. So I, I can give you anything. It doesn't matter. All right? Because I'm it. I'm all of it. Esau then is firstborn and Jacob is born later, says Luther. But God inverts the order and says, the flesh is proud, but the spirit is sad. Um, the flesh is falsehood, but the spirit is truth. So, the kingdoms of the world are all bigger than Israel. Babylonians, Assyrians, Greeks, and Romans. But none of them are the people of God. The Hebrews are the people of God. Eber, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. They're the important ones. And this is to the glory of God. It's to the glory of God. Cain is cast aside, but Abel lives forever. The world is dominated by religions of works all around, but the gospel is still preached in your midst. 
One more Luther quote. This is the doctrine of faith, hope, and comfort, and of love toward God and men. There is no difference except that here in the church God is calling, but there in the world and among the ungodly God is silent. Even that we are the church in the midst of the world is by grace alone. Think about it. By the way, while I'm on the subject, I'm just getting warmed up. Um, the idea, the idea that Lutheranism, or Christianity for that matter, is about being right, is the most backwards thing on the planet. You want to get Luther right? You want to get the Reformation right? You want to understand Christianity? Then you got to go to its core. Jesus for sinners. Comfort for troubled consciences. This isn't a history book. This isn't only history. Yes, yes, yes. Esau was a very hairy guy. And um, you see, uh, Jacob was grasping after his seat. And, um, and, that's, and that's what the, and that, and that's the, the, the history of the children of God. No, this is about your comfort. This is about your comfort. Even when, um, when you have this sentence, the older shall serve the younger, Luther can go on for 10 pages about comfort for troubled consciences and how this is comfort for those who are beaten up and those who are, 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 are pooped on in this world and those who feel like the back, the north end of a southbound horse. The, the world spits you up, chews you up, and spits you out. But don't fret. Because the, 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 the greater shall serve the younger. You think this is about getting it right? That's fundamentalism. And it, and it loses. The problem with fundamentalism is not that they're not Christian. Fundamentalists are Christian. It's that, they, they, that the, their starting point, getting it fundamentally right, distracts from the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is for the comfort of troubled, sin, comfort, uh, comfort of troubled sin, sinners. You want to get the core of the Reformation right. The reason why I'm a Lutheran and not a Baptist or a Charismatic or a um, um, Presbyterian. You imagine me, I'd be a cool Presbyterian. But the, but the, the reason why is, is because this is all about the comfort of troubled consciences. This is about comfort. This is about forgiveness. This is about hope. Christianity isn't about just being right as opposed to uh, Islam, Buddhism, and the like that's wrong. This is about there is a God who cares for sinners. And he gave up his life for you. And he rose again on the third day and you rose with him. It's not about changing your behavior. Do change your behavior. There's nothing worse than when we get wrapped up in behavior change. The church is full of faithful pastors who have gone wrong because the lives of their people didn't change. Tertullian, Marcion. Tertullian gave us the, 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 the doctrine of the Trinity. He confessed it first. And then he went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs because nobody changed. Nobody changed. It's like, this isn't working. I'm going to go and do something freaky like going to the woods and separate myself from humanity. It isn't about being right. It isn't about changing your life, although we are right and life does change. This is about comfort for people who's, who find themselves often wrong and whose lives struggle to change. And you find this comfort, oh, you find this comfort in the words, the greater, the, 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 the older will serve the younger. But if you can quote Luther, but yet it's not about the gospel, then you've gotten Luther wrong. You've gotten Luther wrong. So, so th th this is the test. The test is, is everything about the suffering and death of Jesus, or is it not? Even yesterday, we had like a filler episode. Um, yesterday was the like in the middle of... Uh, the older you get, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to Felicity like an old man. Felicity, the older you get, you'll find that um, shows bunch up things. Um, the, the beginning of the season has all the good stuff. The middle of the season is story time where they'll do a bunch of things. And the end of the season is where things, uh, the cliffhanger and all of that. 
we were in the middle of the 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 the, the stuff yesterday. That's what we were, and, and I was surprised that y'all were like this. Oh, uh, excuse me. Um, because I mean, it was it was it was it was it was uh, there was a couple of genealogies, Ishmael's genealogy and the like. But what we were what we were what we were seeing is we were watching for Jesus, which made it important. We were watching our salvation worked out through history. So if anyone, even somebody who wears this, a conservative, points you to Christianity that isn't about the comfort of troubled consciences, or they go, well, that, uh, that is uh, too gospely, and if you get that gospely, then people will sin. <laughs> Run away from those folks. Turn a channel. Move on. Because that's not what this is about. This is about the comfort of troubled consciences. This is about you being saved. So when, when Jacob is going to be served by Esau, this is not just trivial pursuit stuff. This is about the gospel. Hey, you're making false alternatives. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. It's only a false alternative if you don't get the gospel. If you don't see that it's a thing that will keep you up at night, that your sins will. If you've never been troubled by your sins, as you stayed up all night thinking, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I did that. I'm going to go to hell. Or when somebody talks about making it to heaven, you're like, yeah. Because hmm. you know the things that you do and think and feel. If you've not been, then you don't get it. By the way, for those of you scoring at home, um, that's not a problem only with your gospel. You haven't heard the law yet. <laughs> you haven't heard the law yet. Because when you hear the law, you're like, I don't want any more of that. And you want to run to the gospel. You're not like, I'm sorry, I didn't hear enough exhortation. No, no. Um, when you hear the law, the true law, the damning law, the law that throws you into hell forever, you're like, that thing's hot. Paul says it this way. You guys that want the law, have you heard the law? I mean, have you literally heard the law? I mean, heard it in its entirety. my life or the movie of my life when I arrive at the perky gates. The, there's no difference externally between the church and the world except that God has had mercy on those who believe in Jesus. Uh, I don't like that because there's a life change when it comes to the church. The people's lives change. Uh, 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 look, take it up with Luther. Uh, uh, I just work here. I'm sorry. Your four-page single-space letters, they need to be addressed to Dr. Luther before you send them to the district president and the first vice president. Okay? Take it up with him. Whew! I'm sorry about that. I got a little off subject there for a second. Um, Jacob is loved by his mama. Esau is loved by his dad. So one time, when Jacob was co cooking pottage, he was cooking lentils. He was cooking, po uh, um, uh, I've included, you get Luther's translation down here. Um, he was cooking pottage. It's an interesting word because the word for lentils has the root word for red in it as well. And so when, when Esau says in the next sentence, let me eat some of your red stew, um, it's, it's red, red stuff. Um, uh, Luther captures this by saying, let me eat some of your pottage, the red pottage. Um, it, it, uh, there's a lot of red going on. I'm seeing red. Um, so once when, 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 when Jacob was cooking, Esau came in from the field 
Um, and he was, uh, it's an interesting word. Um, he was exhausted. Um, he, he, he was, he was, he was near, near, um, P O T T A G E. Um, <laughs> red beans and rice. Well, that's the, that's the stuff you get gene when you go down to Nolens, right? Um, um, so Esau said to Jacob, um, let me eat. And you don't even have to know Hebrew to see this. Um, do you see that you, you don't even have to have a working knowledge of the language to see that those two words are, are nearly the same. So give me some of that red, red stuff, you know, give me some of your red, red, you know, um, uh, you know, give me, give me, give me some of that. Um, like I was reading it earlier today and I'm just like, red red but that that that's what the word said that's i mean that's um hadam om ha ha dom Bo both is the same so anyway um let me eat some of the red red stuff for i am you know this is a word that's it's 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 not used often um uh, it's intensely tired, uh, fainting to the point of, you know, you're just, you're just, you're just, you know, um, like cold water to a thirsty soul. So is good news from a far country says the Proverbs. So like cold water to a famished soul. So is good news to one of them. So, um, so this is an intense form of tired. Okay. So he's intensely tired to the point in which he is, he's, he, I'm going to die. I'm so tired. Um, uh, the scholars of Luther's day said that Esau was so tired that he, he couldn't even feed himself. That's how tired he was. I don't, I don't think he was that tired. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's what's going on here. Um, I don't think that's what's going on here. Um, what's going on here is that Esau doesn't need what he's going to give up. It's a nothing to him. True story. It's a nothing to him. Um, uh, I mean, I could look at Genesis three my whole time, and I'm not going to find uh, um, what I'm looking for. It's in Genesis 25. We'll get there. Um, oops, gone too far. Uh, so the the problem here is that he comes in and he's starving. And, but we, we're going to get to see a little bit of this virtuous Jacob and it will, um, what I love about Jacob is that, um, he's so blastedly funny. Let me have some of that red, red for I'm exhausted. Therefore his name was called Edom, which means red. So, so the, the, the dude who's red, hairy red, comes in, uh, Esau, Edom, Edomites, another nation that struggled with e Israel. Um, so Jacob comes in, he comes in, to, uh, Esau comes in, he comes in and catches Jacob. And he's, yeah, dog tied, Cher t tired Cheryl. Um, he, he can't go another, I'm dying. Give me some, get, let me eat some of your red red, for I am exhausted and therefore his name is red i mean that i mean that's i mean look at that word that's edom 
Look at that word. Give me some of that red red. Notice the same form. You don't have to be a Hebrew scholar to notice the same form. The chicken scratch looks the same. Hebrew on the outside looks like tire marks on a page. Um, but you can see what happened here. Give me some of that red red. Give me some of that red stew. That red lentils. I need some of it. I'm going to die. Therefore, his name is Edom. Thor is uh, over there on the um, on the chair. Hey, buddy, can you come here? Just tossed him a treat. He'll be awake in just a second now that there's food. Um, Jacob doesn't miss an opportunity. So, uh, sell me your birthright now. I absolutely love this. Jacob said to him, you know, um, give to me or sell to me or trade to me your uh, today. Today, Kayom, this day, your, um, your birthright, your birth blessing. Um, make me firstborn. Give up your firstborn status. I'll feed you. Esau said to him, I'm about to die. <laughs> Esau said to him, I am, um, I, 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 I'm, like, like, uh, I'm, I'm about to die. You know, I'm, I'm going to die. So like, um, so like, you know, like, behold, I um, am going to go to death. So, you know, what's my, what's, so why, do, why does my birthright matter? It didn't matter to him anyway. It didn't matter to him. That's the whole point. It's not going to die. What the, you're not that tired. It's that his birthright was a nothing to him because he was, he, like, he had dad. So what? So what? I'm going to sell you my birthright. So what? So what? Dad's never going to bless you. Look at you. Look at you, Jacob. You're nothing. Nothing. Look at you, church. You're despised and rejected by the world. Look at you. You're nothing. Nothing. The world, the world cares about strength. The world cares about fairness. And you're not fair. So it doesn't matter. You can have it. I love this. I love it. One, Jacob, the trickster. Yeah, you got it, Maggie. He knew he had Dad's love. What does it matter? See, what was promised to Jacob by means of the Lord's words now has a fulfillment. Now is a fulfillment. Now is a fulfillment. Because, because Esau is going to give to Jacob first blessing. And God doesn't have to have this happen. God does a bunch of things counterculturally all the time. Terry Lynn, the Lord be with you. Good to see you. He does all the um he does the the uh the countercultural thing all the time. So he doesn't need Esau to give up his birthright for, to 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 run the seed through Jacob. But Esau so doesn't care about the whole thing because he's a hunter and he's he's all that and daddy loves him and, and everybody thinks he's great. Jacob. How do you sell your birthright? Well, you just, here's my inheritance. Where do I sign? So what's great is if Jacob was kidding, it's very clear that he's not in verse 33. Sell me your birthright. And what does it matter, my birthright? I'm going to die here. Why does it really matter? 
okay, then swear to me now. 33, and Jacob said to him, swear to me, Kayom, on this day. So he swore to him. Kind of like a will. So he swore to him and sold his birthright, his birthplace to him. And then Jacob uh, gave Esau bread and lentil stew. And he ate, and he drank, and he rose, and he went on his way. But Moses doesn't stop there. See, this is what, um, this is what I don't want you to miss, because if he was so tired that he couldn't feel feed himself, if he was so near death that he was going to just, it didn't matter any. Sure got up fast and went to bed. Didn't stop him from getting up and going. And if you want the commentary on this from God through Moses, you'll find it at the end. It starts with bis, uh, the Hebrew word bitsa, which means um, to think highly of oneself. That's its primary meaning. Um, it, it 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 sort of um, it's it's a it's a verb that that and on its its sort of primary meaning. You'll see it over here in BDB. To raise the head loftily and disdain, disdainfully. It's like a teenager's, you know, shoulder tuck with the head, head spike. Um, that's what he thought of his, his birthright. He disdained it. And, 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 and Moses gives you the commentary on it. Esau, teenage despised his birthright. Hi, Eric. The Lord be with you. Pride. Yeah, there's a lot of pride here. Oh, man, I just spilled pop on myself. But I used to think, it's Jacob. I love Jacob, the trickster. He seems to bend the Lord's rules and laws. Is this stealing? Um, No. No. This is based on Esau's... Um, despising of his birthright. Esau thought his birthright was nothing. It could be given away for a, a thing of stew. You are not the church, Esau. You're the Edomites. The church is going to come through Jacob, who, who tricks you into selling your birthright because you despise it. It's a nothing to you, but it's everything to Jacob. Um, so he raised the head loftily and disdain, disdainfully his birthright. He just, he just didn't care about his birthright. And so now, even though Isaac doesn't know about it, Jacob has Esau's birthright. Jacob is the heir. And you can imagine Esau saying, does this really, I mean, is this really it? Come on. One day over supper? Seriously? No, it's everything. It's everything. It's everything. It's about our salvation. It's about our salvation. And Jacob knows the promise. Jacob knows the promise. Does God give one up to their sin? Yeah, Terry Lynn, he doesn't. 
God doesn't force you to cherish Christianity. If you if you think your Christian faith's a nothing and you want to give it up, he's not going to stop you. He's going to he's going to encourage you, he's going to preach to you, he's going to to beg and plead with you. But force people to be his children? That's not the way God rolls. He suffers himself to be rejected. Does that not sound like Jesus on the cross for you? So the line now, we leave um, Pastor Finker um, with um, 26. But the line now is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday Bible studies. They'll be handled by Pastor Finker. Or Goodman, I don't know. I don't know who, who it is. I think Finker's taken it. But um, uh, it will not be me. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, Thursday and Friday, there'll be no daily Bible study because we're trying to encourage you to spend time at the virtual conference. And so the virtual conference um, is where you'll find HT content on, on Thursday and Friday. Uh, until then, it'll be a week, and I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. But I hope to see you at the virtual conference. Go to higherthings.org slash conferences and register today. 10 plus hours of content with amazing speakers. Amazing speakers. And you are going to love it. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. I promise you. You will not send me a message like, oh, you rooked me out of my money. No, you are going to love this. You're going to love this. And I will catch you a week from Monday um, for higher things. Peace be with you and have a blessed week. Oh, sorry. We'll be back on Monday. Same bad times, same bad channel in the, in the Finker, Kansas cave. Take care. Have a blessed day.